is the skyline of my hometown, New Orleans. It was a great place to grow up, but it's one of the most vulnerable spots in the world. Half the city is already below sea level. In 2005, the world watched as New Orleans and the Gulf Coast were devastated by Hurricane Katrina. We're already in an era of climate change, so the question is, what do we do about it? How do you prepare for these consequences? How do you change our communities? How do you change land use and zoning with climate change in mind? And these are some of the things that we work with at the Climate Center and at the Harrison Institute, our colleagues, in a clinical program that we support. In the world of environmental policy, climate is the cutting edge issue. There are things that, which if we don't deal with them, the consequences for the next generation are truly alarming. We serve both external partners like the state governments that we work with, but also we enable the students to get real-world work experience. We got to work here in Maryland and go to a coastal conference in Annapolis where we got to meet local government officials. And then up in Connecticut, we actually were able to present our work. We inform the federal dialogue with the lessons from states that have been leading on climate and energy policy for some time now. We have to learn from each other. This is really one of the greatest public policy challenges uh, of our generation. The state efforts have accelerated and we have a unique relationship with the states. We have done things like take governors or leading state officials to speak at the U.S. stage in Cancun in the negotiations or in Copenhagen back when President Obama and other leading officials from around the world gathered. We created an adaptation clearinghouse that has a thousand entries and people can just search it for free and they can find states that have climate action plans on the book so that they can develop their own plans. We also facilitate something called the Transportation and Climate Initiative, which consists of 12 jurisdictions from D.C. to Maine, where the energy, the environment, and the transportation agencies are all working together to reduce the energy use that comes from the transportation sectors while creating climate that's more suitable for electric vehicle infrastructure to take place, consistent signage, educational campaigns and outreach so that people understand what it entails to move towards an electric vehicle. It's not unusual for us to get calls now from the Hill or from the White House, Department of Homeland Security to come over and talk to them about our work. And of course, Georgetown Law has a top-notch environmental law faculty with other experts like Lisa Heinzerling, Edith Brown Weiss, and Hope Babcock, who also contribute articles on climate change. One thing that we have been talking about within Georgetown is the opportunity to really have a bigger role in the world, in the D.C. government, and the federal government, from its position right here on Capitol Hill. There are tremendous opportunities to address climate change in ways that build the economy, that grow jobs. We're all learning by doing, but the operative word is doing. Thank you. <laughs>